Good day everyone, my name is Angelique Lorraine Somera and I'm your Gender and Development Focal of the Pentawid Pamilyang Filipino Program, Mimaropa Region. Today, I'm going to present the topics on gender sensitivity in the workplace. We will be discussing the gender sensitivity, the difference of sex and gender, gender issues, gender-based perception, and how to promote gender equality. Let's begin with defining the basic terms sex and gender. While gender is very much related to sex, many people are often confused about its differences. When I say sex, this is about what makes a male or female. It is biological to mean and it refers to physical characteristics and what you are born with. On the other hand, gender is about what makes a person masculine or feminine. It is socially determined and culturally defined. It is learned behavior, and it is what happens to a person afterwards. Now, let me ask you this question. Do you know what is gender sensitivity? Kindly show a thumbs up if yes, and thumbs down if not. Some of you might know this topic, and some have heard this for the first time. But the real score here is for us to understand the depth of our topic, which is gender sensitivity. Please bear in mind that everyone can listen, but not anyone can hear. Everyone might know, but not everyone can understand. To give you a brief background, the concept of gender sensitivity has been developed as a way to reduce barriers to personal economic development that was created by sexism. In simple terms, gender sensitivity helps to generate respect for the individual regardless of their sex. It involves greater awareness of the needs, aspiration, abilities, and professional value of a person as a man and woman without any prejudice about their gender. Now that we know already the meaning of the gender sensitivity, how can we apply this in our workplace? Promoting gender sensitivity in the workplace is important to provide modal practice in promoting a non-discriminatory workplace for employees who are male, female, lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender. If we have a gender-sensitive workplace, it creates the right condition for the fullest utilization of the human potential in the organizational setting. Thus, it is imperative for the people within an organization to be aware of the widest possible range of life options for everyone. Men and women had trouble communicating effectively since the beginning of time, and it's not just in the workplace. In fact, the differences between the genders have long been the topic of debate and the subject of many books. When it comes to the workplace, however, it's not important that you even try to understand the differences between the genders. Although you may not like to hear that women are still discriminated against in the workplace, it's a fact. And it's true that most men have respect for professional women in the workplace and no longer hold the caveman belief that women belong at home, raising kids, cooking meals. However, discrepancies between men and women and some amount of discrimination still exist. I would like to share with you the common gender issues in the workplace, which were the results of research studies and survey on gender and development. First is about discrepancies in pay. In the field of employment, women still don't earn the same salaries as men for the same job status or position. This holds true even though more women than men hold bachelor's degree and women are enrolling in college more often than men. The differences in pay don't just occur early on their careers but women continue to earn less money than their male counterparts. It is great that in a government agency, male and female have the same salary wage as per their acquired position. Also, it is the same in the private agencies. The salaries of the employees depend on the position, not on the sex or gender preference of an employee. The reason for the differences in pay reflects societal and cultural views on family and children. Women typically get pregnant in the middle of their career. They take time off for maternity leave. 
once they have a child, they don't work as many hours as their male counterparts because of their sick children, activities, and other events that occur as a result of motherhood. In addition, they also tend to travel less frequently once they have a child. Because of this, they can get passed up for promotions. Men are still viewed as the providers, as the ones that will work the long hours and do what it takes to get ahead for the better of their families. Women are still viewed as the ones responsible for household obligation and nurturing their children. The truth is, both genders borrow their careers and personal advancement. Women shut their glass ceilings every day and it's not because they're just marking time until they start a family. The next issue is about communication. Men and women typically communicate in different ways, making it very easy for disagreements and misunderstanding to happen. Other issue is about behavior. Women are expected to be demure. A woman who is aggressive can still be seen as a monster, as someone you don't want to be around or promote. However, a man who is aggressive is seen as powerful and someone who will go for in the chosen career path. Gender sensitivity at workplace has assumed as much importance at ethnicity as in race, age, and color related aspects of the individual in an organization. There are two types of characteristics of a person that can affect how he or she perceived and communicate to his or her colleague. The primary factors are the one inside small circle. These are the characteristics we cannot change. It's innate to us since birth. However, the secondary characteristics or the big circle are the factors we can change through time by experience and influence during person's life. If a workplace is not a gender responsive, probably there is a presence of gender discrimination in the workplace where it has two types the disparate impact and desperate treatment. What are they? Desperate impact is a discrimination at work where it is not intentional. An example of it is a parcel delivery service who hires driver who speak English. On the other hand, the desperate treatment are those intentional acts of discrimination. For example, like a parcel delivery service does not hire female drivers. Discrimination in the workplace is because of the common gender stereotypes that cause a lot of misconceptions in the workplace. It doesn't matter if we're talking about gender, race, or color. As with any stereotype, gender stereotypes prevent effective communication between men and women. They can even create friction and discord, which lessen company morale and productivity. Here are some common stereotypes about women in the workplace. Again, these are stereotypes. I will also highlight the differences between the ways men are viewed in the workplace as opposed to women. For women, they aren't as experienced in sport as men, so they can be as good team players. Assertive women are trouble for worse feminists. Women aren't committed to their work because of the family obligation. Women don't work well with other women because they're catty. Women are the primary source of gossip in the workplace. Women are too emotional. We talk about how women can be negatively portrayed in the workplace, but they're not the only ones. Men can be unfairly portrayed too. While the stereotypes being in the female gender can make a woman seem not as capable, as devoted, as qualified, the stereotype cast on men can make them seem like inhuman pervert only out of their own success and satisfaction. Here are a few of the stereotypes that are applied to the male gender in the workplace. Men are focused on their careers. Family takes second place. Men aren't emotional. In other words, they don't care about anyone's feelings. Men can treat attractive female colleagues as equal because they only view them as a sex object. Men will never see women as their equals in the workplace because they don't want them to be. And men are all parts of the good old boys club and always help each other help get promotion over other women colleagues. The truth is, women and men are in workplace for the same reason, to advance their career and to earn the living. 
How they choose to do so depends on how many factors include the education, culture, behavior, and goals. Even though genders may communicate differently and do things a little different at times, that doesn't mean that they're not equal and equally committed to the task at hand, their job, and their career. Applying a stereotype to either gender can only result in miscommunication, frustration, and discord in the workplace. Nobody gets ahead when that happens. It's important to remember that we are all individual. Even though men and women are different, we are all still individual. Applying a stereotype to anyone is a dangerous thing to do. Not only are stereotypes a bias and inaccurate, they can also lead to a legal nightmare if stereotyping someone leads to discrimination. People in the workplace are professionals and they are, should behave as such in their own individual way. Both men and women want to get ahead to the workplace. Men and women are also equal in the workplace. That's not just a statement, that's the law. You cannot treat men differently from women or vice versa. While it seems like those laws may favor women at times, it also makes it possible for men to take paternity leave use sick days to take care for children, and other things that used to be female-only roles. Here is the distinction between gender-based perception on male and female leadership. On organizational structure, women are more participative, while men are hierarchical. On interpersonal attention, women focus on the process, while men focus on the outcome. Their problem-solving styles also differ where Women are trust instincts, while men will not trust intuition and less proven. On the work staff, women are collaborative, while men are independent. On the management style, women are supportive, while men are directive. Lastly, women view their work-related conflict as destructive, while men view conflict as normal. However, remember that gender-based perception are not written in stones. There are women in the workplace who display more masculine behavior and management style and vice versa. A balance of masculine and feminine qualities has proven to be the best strategy for success for individual teams and organizations. The next issue that we're going to discuss, which also exists in the workplace, is sexual harassment. In a big picture, there is no gender-responsive workplace if a sexual harassment exists. Yes, sexual harassment in employment is an act committed by an employer, employee, manager, supervisor, agent of the employer, teacher, instructor, professor, coach, trainer, or any other person who having authority, influence, or more ascendancy over another in a work or training or educational environment demands, requests, or otherwise requires any sexual favor from the other regardless of whether the demand, request, or requirements for submission is accepted by the object of the said act. This happens when a sexual favor is made as a condition in the hiring or in the employment, the employment or continued employment of an individual, or in granting said individual favorable compensation terms, condition, promotion, or privileges, or the refusal to grant the sexual favor result in limiting, segregating, or classifying the employee, which in any way would discriminate, deprive, or diminish employment opportunity or otherwise adversely affect said employee. With all those issues connected to a gender, how we can promote and practice a gender-sensitive workplace? Here are some ways which we could advocate for a gender-sensitive workplace. Gender plays a part in communication. Effective communication between individual, teams, or groups depend on a lot of factors. Tone of voice, body language, communication style, and the words used are all determine how effective communication is or isn't. Communicate in different ways, which have different strengths and weaknesses when it comes to communication, and the use of different methods to communicate their thoughts, ideas, and feelings. Understanding these differences can lead to improved communication between the gender in the workplace. 
we're going to enumerate strength and weakness for both men and women when it comes to communicating. Keep in mind that not all the female strengths will apply to women and vice versa. However, these aren't stereotypes either. These are proven facts. After that, we'll suggest strategies for communicating with the opposite gender to help improve the effectiveness of communication between men and women in the workplace. For women, women are great at reading body language and picking up other nonverbal cues when communicating with other people. They are also good listeners and effective at showing empathy. However, these same strengths can also be weaknesses. They get too emotional, become too demure and not authoritative enough or won't get to the point as quickly as needed. How about men? Men exclude a strong physical presence when communicating with others. The way they stand or carry themselves display confidence and power, so does the body language they use. Men also tend to get to the point quickly. However, this strength can also turn into weaknesses when they get too blunt. Men can be seen as insensitive to others and too confident in their thoughts, ideas, and selves. Now, how to achieve effective communication between the genders in the workplace? We need to find a way to build a communication gap that exists. Here are the strategies for effective communication that will help our verbal and nonverbal communication with a person of the opposite gender as effective as possible. Communication strategies for women. Men and women communicate differently. If you're a woman, most likely you can relate to some of the traits that were described as feminine communication styles. However, being aware of the conversation styles of your male counterparts will give you insights and help improve the effectiveness of communication. When communicating men, value is achieving results. Asking for help is admitting lack of ability. Focus on statistics. To tell a story to one up the other person. Want to solve the problem right away. When communicating with men, women need to get to the bottom line as quickly as possible. Avoid telling drone out stories when you can. If you feel the need to tell a story, thoughts, use gender neutral metaphors and analogies in your stories, such as metaphors and analogies about the weather, etc. Women have to remember that men aren't going to talk until they have the information they need. So women should wait until a man is ready for discussion. When they need to talk, it's time to observe and listen. Don't process what they say out loud. Since women are more nurturing, it's natural for women to offer the help a co-worker or employee. However, to a man that's viewed as a lack of confidence in his abilities. Women should be quick to offer advice instead. Be willing to give the advice or assistant when asked. What about communication strategies for men? Share experience to find common ground. Build off each other's point. Talk about problems and solve them together. Processing is used as a way to build the relationship. Place emphasis on communication and feelings. Offer assistance to be helpful and because they care. When a woman tells a story during a discussion, she is trying to find a common ground with the other people participating in the discussion. She's not trying to waste time or beat about the bush. Instead, she's trying to forge a relationship with you. When she processes what you say out loud, it's her attempt to include everyone and again, forge a relationship. A woman also appreciates if you offer to help and you should offer to her it shows you are supportive. Now that we know the communication strategies for both sexes, let's tackle on how to promote gender equality in the workplace through equal employment, opportunities, affirmative action, and diversity and inclusion. With this, what we need to do are identify and eliminate insensitive behavior patterns of employees, increase level of respect for each other, and increase awareness on widespread use of correct and appropriate terminology and language at the workplace. Let me introduce the how-to methodology for a more gender-sensitive workplace. First, ensure active participation of men, women, and transgender employees. 
promote the active use of inclusive and gender-neutral language at the workplace, identify and eliminate the obsolete views and thoughts on the roles of all sexes, promote paradigm shift in outlook, feelings, and thoughts for opposite and other sexes, and lastly, encourage conducive work environment to be free of any security-based fears for all sexes. In relation to the role of the government in promoting gender sensitivity, it has implemented various efforts, such as freedom on the preferred uniform styles of personnel belonging to the LGBT community will be respected. Also, Solo Parent Welfare Act of 2000 was passed to grant leave benefits to the solo parent. The Republic Act 10911, also known as Anti-Age Discrimination Law, was passed. And lastly, the issued Memorandum Circular No. 12, Series of 2005, or the Implementation of Gender Fair Language, which encouraged the use of non-sexist language in all official documents, communications, and issuances. Now, let's check the reality of the effect of the government efforts. According to the Global Gender Gap Report of 2020 of the World Economic Forum, the Philippines remain the top country in Asia in terms of closing the gender gap. The report shows that the Philippines has closed 78% of its overall gender gap. With this, it ranks 16 out of 153 countries with the narrowest gap between men and women, dropping by 8 notches from its place last year. But still, it remains as a sole Asian country that made it to the top 20 peers, followed by Laos, which ranked 43rd. According to the report, the downgrade is due to the lower female representation in the cabinet, which declined from 25% to 10% between 2017 to 2019. Female representation to Congress is also fell slightly at 28% at the beginning of 2019. According to the Philippine Statistics Authority, we have 106.7 million population. The female population is 53.5 million, while the male population is 53.6 million. Life expectancy is also shown here, where the average life expectancy of male is 59, while for female is 64 years old. The top three courses that both sexes take are business administration and law, followed by Education and last STEM are the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Where the female population is higher in business and in education, while male students opt to enroll for the STEM course. Thank you very much for listening. I hope that you have learned how we should respect each other regardless of the gender. We have seen the government's effort to ensure gender sensitivity among its workforce. Let us continue to observe gender sensitivity as we deal with our partner beneficiaries, program partners, and fellow staff. Have a great day, everyone.